let's the, let the recording start. Okay. Tools. Share desktop. Window. Share. Um, guys, just to uh, uh, what each color note uh, means. So, like red will be flammability, blue will be health hazard, uh, white will be specific hazard, and then yellow is reactivity. Right. I did tell you just to know the NFPA that means this, but. I wanted to know the colors, what each color means. You don't have to know the specific, just what each color means. That is for the previous lecture. Okay. We are good. We're recording. Let's go ahead. So today we're talking about just products. And this is our last uh, lecture in the exam right so the exam we have it next or right for dental materials it will have uh chapter one two three and four and then 16. and all of these are exam and and canvas under exam one resources so you have all of that and uh, most probably we'll do a quick review as well anyway gypsum products so this is the last chapter and the good thing is that you guys been in the been in the lab, all of the groups been in the lab. So this is more familiar subject to all of you technically because you've worked with gypsum um, and you've already used it. We filled a handout for it. So a lot of information, it's kind of, you already know them. Okay. So we know why we do what our dental model these things that you see here inside, they are hard and soft tissue. The one on the left side, what is this? What do you call that? An impression. That is an impression. So this is what we take in the dental office to actually, this is, this is, this is called a negative representation of a negative reproduction of the patient teeth, right? It's negative. It's not the actual rep representative or replication. The positive uh, reproduction of the 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 way that we do it, and definitely in the lab. I mean, the not but with the lab, we have the multiple impression of the patient. of the patient's uh, teeth and definitely we have different uses which we talked about you know, make a uh, study of them so we use them for a study we use them for diagnosis uh, uh, different types of appliances of the patient. Uh, so that's what we use them for it's a way for us to take the patient mouth out of the patient and work with it send it to the lab get all the things that we need to do on it and then Right, you can see uh, uh, here coming up. Implant, right? This plan for a denture. To 
right? These are mount cards. We have the uh, gypsum products. Some rock that we have. It's in the first. Take and then we process to be able to do gypsum. So again, we did talk about these different types and uh, of gypsum products in the lab. So how many times? We have five. Each of them is used for. Okay, go for it. So let's talk about two types. So impression plaster, as I explained also before, to do impressions with the plaster. You know the plaster that to pour the models in the lab. They use impression tray, put it inside a patient mouth for whatever you know about twenty minutes. Take it down and then take it out of safe outside the patient. impression materials so sometimes they use it to mount the casts on the articulator we know what the you can see we patient bite the poured in the lab, right? So it is used for these casts, which we'll talk about. They are study models. They have uh, good durability, but they are weak material. That's why we don't use it to make crowns or bridges to make these things. But type two, which is the plaster, the model plaster, we use it for diagnostic casts. What is the ratio that we have? 100 grams. Yeah, let's do 47 to. Uh, yeah, so even if you find, you know, 45 or 47 without to 50, that's okay. That's a correct answer. That is the ratio technically. Point forty. Uh, Okay, and we know that it products. We know that we have five types, and we're talking each type of them is used for in the uh, work. Also, so see dental stone, which is usually yellow, 
is used to make full or partial denture models. So you can see here we're using it to make partial denture models. Thirty milliliters of water to a hundred. So you see, we're using less water here in the dental stone, that even more stronger. As we go stronger with the gypsum products, you usually add less water. Okay. Models, you can, you know, study the model with the model plaster, while with the orthodontic, you know, while the appliances, the ones like the, the wire retainer, these things that have wires in them or the ones that have some, uh, some acrylic in them. So it's not just for the study model, it's actually to make some. Numerals. Exactly. So we have also another type of dental stone, right? Number three, we said it's dental stone, but we have a dental stone that is high strength and low expansion. And sometimes, or most of the times, they're called dye stones, okay? Or densite. And technically, this is what the dye means. This is the dye you, you see here. So you can see we make uh, we make or bridge. Stone. So you can we have. Stone, right? So you can we have two types of the gypsum here. To make these crowns, they will actually, as you can see, to make individual teeth, they work on them and they put them back to make the cast. And that's why. materials that they need. Newer dental materials. There are even some other types that they would have metal plated or epoxy dyes and they have resin. In so they're different. force them more. Um, Five types that we talked about. We have the impression plaster that is not used as much today. Generally, number two or type two, the diagnostic cast, uh, which is weak a little bit. Dye stone or dental stone, number three, generally for partial dentures or dentures. And then we have number four, that is the dye stone for crowns and bridges. Number five, that is the even more stronger one. Okay. 
So that was the classification based on the touching point, right? We're going to talk about the classification based on the cast or model type. So what are the models that we have? With this cast we called diagnostic cast, right? That is the cast that we just did in the lab. The white one we call diagnostic or study model, right? The other casts that we work that we make uh, appliances on, we call working casts, something similar to that. And then we or dies, which are these individual ones, technically. Okay. So now, now we're talking again about the casts and what each cast is. Call them study models. So plan the treatment, right, to study the patient. Observe the oral structures of the mouth. And it can be used for study uh, models for the orthodontics. Again, it's just mainly uh, for the study and diagnostic of the case on these casts. Why? They are made of what type of plaster? Or what type of gypsum? The model plaster, right? It's so eight in the morning, so get to wake up. <laughs> the model plaster. So are made the study models, right? Or the study casts. Am I making sense? Cast and what material it's made of. The other use is so it's a three-dimensional record of the patient, heart and soft tissue to study, and so on and so forth. See the study of the patient, of the tooth size, position, and, and uh, shape of the arch, heart and soft tissue. Again, it's all study, study, a record, right? A visual aid, a legal record, study. So it's, again, it's just mainly a record and study. That is one. That is the diagnostic cast. The working casts or working models, these are the ones that we use to make appliances. Remember that word that I fixed? I said orthodontic appliances, not models. You can see this is an orthodontic appliance. prosthesis, full or partial denture, and we make this out of gypsum product, dental stone, dental stone which is type, type three. Right guys, easy. Okay. One more cast, type of cast that is left, which is the dyes. And we said these are the dyes, and they're used, you see, these are replicas of individual teeth or group of teeth. So again, you can see in the picture, we have these blue uh, ones. These are the dyes, actually. And definitely, we make them to make crowns and bridges, and they're made of the dental dye stone, right, which is type... Four, exactly. Type four. This in the previous slides when we talked about the different types of the gypsum products and what each product is used for or used to make. But here we're taking it from a different angle, what each cast is named and what material we use it for. So if I ask you, what casts and material we use to make crowns and bridges will be 
for example, the die stone and it's the die cast or the dice, right? What cast we use to make um, partial dentures with and what material? It will be the dental stone, right? Which is the, the previous slide, the dental stone. And it is the working casts. So working casts are made of dental stones and they're used to make removable prosthesis. Okay, we're good. Again, these are just different types of dyes or different pictures of dyes. You can see they cut the teeth all through so they can work on them individually. Okay, and, and on some other uh, applications, they actually just make uh, of teeth as So we're going to talk now about the chemical properties of the gypsum product. Uh, so that is what they're made of, dehydrated of a calcium sulfate. That's actually the material that, that is. Uh, calcination, that is the product to make the, uh, the actual gypsum product. So we to lose the water and then we ground it. And that products. And then the Planck reaction is the reaction that to produce heat when these are made or when the casts are Exothermic, right? Exothermic reaction. Remember when we mixed our uh, models and we poured them, uh, I asked you to touch the model as they're setting and they were warm to touch because these uh, gypsum products would actually set an exothermic reaction, which means uh, a reaction that will produce heat. So this is one of their qualities. So a higher temperature would produce higher strength. So, you know, you go from the model plaster, which is a little bit weak. The process to make them. We know calcination, we know the exothermic reaction, and we know what they're made of. So, think if we put more water, would it be bigger? Exactly. So, the more water that you put, then what we already established, at the right ratio, your mix will be weaker. You must a little bit more bubbles when you mix it. So, we're talking about hardness. Again, the shape of the particles would relate to the product. So based on the, is it plaster, is it dye stone or stone? Dimensional accuracy, so it actually expands a little bit than the higher strength ones. So the plaster one is a little bit less accurate. The one that is white that we poured in the, in the lab, the plaster model, expands a little bit more. So that means it's a little bit less accurate than the dye stone or the stone. But again, we use the plaster model just to do study things, just to diagnose. So we're not using actual appliances. So that's okay. It's not a problem that with the expansion that it has. Reproduction of the details. So as I also kind of mentioned, remember, uh, we're not going to have a clean mold like we have in the lab to be able to pour it right away without having any problems. You're going to use an impression from the patient, which is something similar to that. If it has saliva, right? So make sure that these are clean because blood, food debris, or saliva would affect our. So we have to make sure it's clean. Then pressure. Wash, right? We need to wash the impression again to remove all of that. We will talk about different types of impressions because we have water based, we have like silicon based impressions that we take in the office. So for a plaster or a gypsum product, the water-based type of impression is better for it. Okay. We know that surfactants can be added or spread. Flow and reduce.
So, is the model soluble? It's not that much soluble. So, I mean, technically, you can. Uh, be weakened and it can lose. You know. Based on what I'm looking for, if we're using to do a study model, we'll use and so forth. So based on whatever you're looking for. Uh, the water to powder ratio, definitely we have to adhere to the manufacturer's suggestion. Uh, we measure with a scale and graduated cylinder. Spatulation, because we're using the spatula. Technically, it's called spatulation. So the different types of mixing, we can mix it with our hand with a spatula and a rubber ball. Uh, we can mix it with a mixing machine like that one with or this is the same machine that we have in the lab, with or without vacuum. And we mix blank into blank for even wet, for even wetting. Powder into water, right? So we want to have the water first and on it. But again, this is the right way to do it. But when you go out there, you'll see people just putting powder and started putting water on it. Job mixing, this would not be a problem. We already have that. Okay. We know this information, so Blank is one minute mixing time, right? Blank is about five to seven minutes working time, right? And blank setting is eight to 16 minutes initial setting. And blank setting is one hour, 45 minutes, final setting. So that's when you mix these products. Again, it's always good to manufacture. Products, but products work for about five. And it's your model when it's still warm that means it's still setting when it's cooled down that's good so if you waited for more than one hour before separating the impression it can actually weaken the model so it's always a good idea that you actually take the model off the impression within that one bit for longer it will take more water and it can be even weaker and then in 24 hours it even gets two to three times stronger or harder The control of the setting time. Blank water. And with blank the setting time. hot and cold in uh, the next few slides I think spatulation you spatulate longer and faster you will accelerate the setting and you will decrease right or or equals shorter setting time so if you mix too much one minute so if you are four We can control. Low 100 Fahrenheit, you will have generally shorter setting time. If it's above, you'll have longer setting times. And at 100 Fahrenheit, you'll have no reaction. You'll not have any setting.
So sometimes you have a fast set, you know, uh, product and a regular set product. You'll see that more in impression materials, things to it, or they actually add things to it to make it fast uh, set slower. So just sure that you're using. So what is slurry water? Slurry water is the water that is taken off from the model trimmers. So these model trimmers on the sink, right? The one, the one, we call them model trimmers. Maybe I didn't show you like specifically, but we have them. The ones that we cut the models to shape with it. So the water that comes from trimming the model, if you use that water to mix the plaster or the, the, the stone, it will set She was telling us that they use that water to make it so it will set within less than half an hour, it will be set. So you don't have to wait for the 45 minutes for the model to set, okay? Anyway, that's what is water is used for. You have to make sure that you're using clean equipment and impression, and that's why you pour your models. Uh, for the first time, you have to clean your rubber ball and your spatula completely, because if you have any remnants, it can cause the material to set faster and your working time will be different. When you store products, they actually can absorb water from the environment, so it should be stored in airtight, moisture-proof, uh, uh, content. These are considered as patient records, so we keep them forever, technically. There is some, I think, but keep all the patient records forever. So that actually creates a problem with these type of casts because they're heavy in a way, there are lots, and then to find office to store them at, right? Offices do like an inventory every five years or so, and they keep it in a different storage area with all of the patient casts, you know, that they already taken. And that's why digital impression is much better than this. Because you take a digital impression and save on your drive or the cloud where you don't care about the space anymore. Anyway. And control, well, infection can work with saliva, we work with blood. So if you take an impression of a patient, their saliva will be on the impression that you can be in there, not wash and disinfect the impression your model can be actually, can carry these infections and can uh, transfer it to other people, to the lab technicians. So we have to make sure that all of the infection. Uh, so we ask to wash before we take the impression. We disinfect the impression after we take it. Uh, we disinfect other tools, definitely. You want to completely set before you dis disinfect the cast. So you can actually spray the cast with a disinfectant, but you don't want to do that before the 24 hours. So 24 hours, and then you can spray your cast to, again, disinfect it. You want to spray rather than immerse in a disinfectant solution because it can uh, alter the dimensions. Right? means We use it at our homes. As bleach, we use it in we use it in endo as well to uh, to disinfect the canals. So, if you want a disinfectant, if you want to disinfect surfaces. You can use one to 10 of bleach. So you put one level of bleach, like one cup of bleach to 10 cups of water, and that will be a disinfectant you can use. But, you know, within 24 hours, after 24 hours, it would not work. Anyway, so sometimes we use that. Okay. Separating the impression from the casts. Uh, this is what we've done to how to how to remove it from how to remove that cat. This is in the lab again. 
so you don't want to overflow the gypsum in the tray. Again, we'll talk about that more on impression, but since anyway, we're talking about gypsum here, we have to have that. Uh, use uh, a lab knife that you can remove. Do not tilt too far. Under. This will be in the lab where you can really understand what we're talking about here. So fabricating these again, we're technically going to do and actually make the, you know, take impressions, pour them, make bases and trim them. That'll be all in the lab. But what we need to know now is blank portion is the hard and soft structures, anatomical or anatomic portion. And then the blank portion, the art portion is the base. And we already filled this out. So you see, this is the anatomic. This is the art portion. And again, this was on the handout. We know the heel is here. Okay. You know, again, this is what an actual thing, you know, you take an impression of the patient, this is how it will look like, and this is for the model with it. You don't have all these sides to it like we have with this mold that we're using. So it'll be a little bit harder to pour it, but in the same time, I mean, you can use other stuff, which we'll see here. So see, when we pour the model or the casts, we can have a double pour method. We can have a single step and we can have boxing. So what double pour means, we pour the first part, which like here, right? Without making a base. We do another mix and then we make a base for it, you know? So we put this on that to, to make a base. Or we can just have a single step. So we pour that and the base together. Then we have a boxing method like you see here. We made a box out of wax so we can make the base. Again, this would be more relevant when we actually pour the model but and that's why i put lab in here because that is more related to the lab trimming again you don't need to know about that too much now but you can see this is how the cast would look like when you pour them if it was from a patient and then what you're going to do is you're going to trim them to make them look like this okay and that's with the trimming machine so again this is about the lab so the trimming is just to make it the access so same thing art portion anatomical portion you can see we have degrees here that you don't need to really know about this now but just know that trimming is just to make it attractive and symmetrical and again just it's like it will look like this at the beginning when you take it from the patient when you pour it from the patient and then to make it look nice we have to trim it with these specific angles to make it look nice that's it if we're doing trim it further, you can see we're only using the U shape of the cast because we just need that part. We just need the teeth part to make it So I was talking about ones that we have in the to trim the models. You know when we want to make things. Digital is here again, as I was saying. Hopefully within the next few years, I mean, there are already a lot of dental practices that use digital impression. So technically, you don't even need to take the impression in the first place. You're not going to take the impression. You're not going to pour the models. You're not going to work with any of these. But it's not yet there. You know, it's only a few offices maybe. Well, there are a lot of offices actually using it. But they still use plaster and you still use regular impression for other things. But I think it's coming where... Hopefully in five to 10 years, you're not going to do any plaster anymore. You're not going to do any impressions anymore. You just use a camera inside a patient mouth. You take a digital impression of the patient mouth and that's it. You send it to the lab, the lab will send you the crown and all is done. But for now, we need to know about that. <laughs> and that's it for this. Before we go too much further.